This week, Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, announced a stunning breakthrough in the development of superintelligence. A Cambridge economist published a scandalous paper confirming something everyone's been whispering about, but few people have said out loud. And a company launched something so dystopian, so terrifying, that 4 million people watched the video just to see if it was real or not. Welcome to Rod Miller AI, where the future of humanity is being decided by people strung out on Ego and Red Bull, and reported on by a guy who loves bologna sandwiches and vodka. That would be me. Hit that like and subscribe button if you would. It's a thumbs up button. Share this with someone you're stalking uh, currently uh, who needs to understand why the world will never be the same again. Maybe, probably, well, at some point, more than likely or not. Let's go. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? So what was Sam Altman's stunning breakthrough in superintelligence development? Did ChatGPT just cure cancer? No. Did it solve climate change? Also no. Uh, did it unlock the secrets of fusion energy, extend human lifespan, or end poverty? Well, no, not quite. The breakthrough was, and I'm reading directly from Sam's X post here, was this, quote, Small but happy win. If you tell ChatGPT not to use M dashes in your custom instructions, it finally does what it's supposed to do. End quote. That's right. After three years of development, tens of billions of dollars in investment, and a $500 billion valuation, ChatGPT can now avoid using a punctuation mark. OpenAI launched ChatGPT in November 2022. It's now November 2025, and if my math is correct, that's three years. They've raised more money than most countries' GDP. They're promising artificial superintelligence that will cure every disease and extend human lifespan. And this week's win? Punctuation control. One user replied, The fact that it's been three years since ChatGPT first launched, and you've only just now managed to make it obey this simple requirement, says a lot about how little control you have over it. They're building an intelligence that's supposed to understand cancer at a molecular level and develop cures with zero margin for error. And it took three years to teach it not to use a dash. A line on your keyboard that's slightly longer than the other line. But you know what women say, size doesn't matter. That's what $500 billion in valuation gets you. Grammar, eventually, if you're lucky, and the next software update doesn't break it again. Meanwhile, Cambridge economist William Janeway published a paper titled In Search of the AI Bubble's Economic Fundamentals. His scandalous conclusion that everyone's been whispering about but nobody wanted to say out loud is, we're in a bubble. Really? OpenAI is raising $30 billion from SoftBank at a $500 billion valuation this week. That sounds impressive until you learn they lost $5 billion in 2024 on $3.7 billion in revenue. Their expected cash burn through 2029, $115 billion. So the business model is lose $5 billion annually, commit to burning $115 billion more, celebrate punctuation control, raise money at half a trillion dollars. I think I could do that. Maybe, maybe I could get a job there. Oracle issued a 30-year bond to fund AI infrastructure. It's already down trading at 65 cents on the dollar. The economists warned that AI market crash could wipe out 8% of U.S. households' wealth and cut GDP by 1.6%, triggering a consumer-led global recession. So they're building a bubble that could crash the economy, and the breakthrough they're celebrating is M-dashes. And then there's the dystopian thing that 4 million people had to watch to believe. A Los Angeles company called Two-Way launched an app that creates AI avatars of your dead relative. The promotional video, which I watched, and you should absolutely sh not, unless you're the type that likes, you know, uh, Halloween-type movies, uh, it shows a pregnant woman talking to an AI recreation of her late mother. The video then jumps forward 10 months. The AI grandma is reading bedtime stories to the baby. Then it jumps forward again. The child is now in elementary school walking home, having casual conversations with dead grandma on his phone. The video ends with the growing son, now an adult, with his own family telling the AI grandmother she's about to become a great-grandmother. 
quote, with two-way, three minutes can last forever. <laughs> the video promises. Oh, uh, I, I, I laugh because I could just see my son wanting to hear my voice over and over in his head after I'm finally dead. What'd you do for? <laughs> or my poor daughter that still hears echoes of me screaming at the top of my lungs in the gymnasium while she's playing basketball. The co-founder of the company, Callum Worthy, re, uh, wrote, what if the loved ones we've lost could be part of our future? Great question there, Callum. Here's a better one. What if we use this technology to cure the diseases that killed them instead of building a subscription service to their freaking corpse? Four million people watched this. Comments included nightmare fuel, demonic, black mirror, and this should be destroyed. But here's the thing. This is what you get when you have powerful technology and no idea what in the world to do with it. Sam Altman promises super intelligence will cure cancer and extend human lifespan, but that requires precision, control, and reliability, and they can't control M dashes. If it takes three years and billions of dollars to control punctuation, they're not five years from curing cancer. And they're raising $30 billion on the promise that this will become super intelligence that saves humanity. Oracle's bonds are tanking. Economists are screaming about bubbles. Investors are buying insurance against tech debt defaulting. And we'll be right back after this fake commercial. Hi, I'm Dr. Janice Melling. Your organs are basically just internal armpits. They are literally sweating to death. That's why I created Edodorant, the internal deodorant. Because right now, your pancreas smells like a gym stock in a Florida dumpster. Your kidneys are sweating like a crackhead at a pharmacy, and your bladder smells like three-month-old milk. But I've created the cure. And unlike my marriage, this actually works. People said, Janice, you can't eat deodorant. The medical board said, Janice, please stop eating deodorant. My family said, Janice, we're staging an intervention. But trust me, I'm a doctor. Look at my coat. It's so white. Almost as white as my now minty fresh liver. Just imagine your spleen now in mountain frost. Your gallbladder in lavender mist. Your appendix in, eh, whatever, it's useless anyway. Just like my ex-husband, Kevin. Kevin, if you're watching, the restraining order expired. Your spleen is crying, Kevin. It's crying stinky tears just like I did when you left me. But my organs are so fresh now they tingle. Tingle with me, Kevin. The freshness could still save our marriage. The freshness is freedom, Kevin. The freshness is freedom. Buy now, pay later, a.k.a. BNPL. You gotta love the acronyms. Just hit 91 million users in the U.S. That's one in three American adults. And here's the absolutely lovely part. Not really. 25% are using it for groceries. Buy now, pay later for groceries. Not TVs, not vacations, not discretionary purchases. Food. One in four BNPL users is financing their groceries. Late payments hit 42% in 2025, up from 34% in 2023. And most of these loans don't show up on credit reports, which means there's a massive gap between people's perceived financial health and their actual financial health. So when economists warn that an AI crash could trigger a consumer-led recession, this is exactly what they're talking about. The consumer spending propping up the economy is being financed by invisible debt that's being used to buy groceries while the tech bros spend hundreds of billions building data centers to teach ChatGPT grammar. Luckily, they're building AI tools to make spending easier as well. Google will track prices for you and auto-purchase when they drop. No friction, no decision-making, just consumption. Ding dong, your milk and cabbage are here, and at the lowest price, too. Make some soup. This is the economic foundation supporting the AI bubble. People borrowing invisible money to buy food while companies burn $115 billion teaching computers punctuation. Totally sustainable, you know, nothing could possibly go wrong with that. So here's where we are. 91 million people are borrowing money that doesn't show up on their credit reports to buy food while Oracle borrows visible money to build data centers that train systems to avoid using dashes. It's a circle, a beautiful, horrifying circle. The broke people finance consumption. The consumption finances ad revenue. The ad revenue finances AI development. The AI development produces grammar assistants and dead grandma chatbots. The grammar assistants helps nobody. The dead grandma chatbots traumatize children. And the whole thing is held together by bonds trading at 65 cents on the dollar. And economists writing papers with titles like 
in search of the AI bubble's economic fundamentals, which is academic speak for, holy shit, we're all going to die. I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>